Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, my name is Sarah. I work for KNX Association in the Marketing Department, and I'm your host today. For today's topic, we have invited two guests from our member company, Comfort Click, to talk about visualization software and servers. Uh, before we go on to the introduction of our, our guests, please allow me to give you some background information. So Canix is known for its ability of integrating all Canix devices, regardless of uh, manufacturers, so that um, unlimited choice of products can work seamlessly together using one simple system. Uh, Canix is also known for its extendability, not only within the Canix ecosystem, but also with other systems. Although theoretically you could use only Canex uh, for, for households to control everything, in, our, in reality, of course, you see people uh, do mix up different systems. Now, when it comes to uh, visualization software, it is also very important to have one central system. Uh, otherwise, one might have to download dozens of apps to control different products in one household. And for this, our guests for today, David and Matik from Comfort Click, will show you such a solution uh, using both the theory and the practical demonstration. So we have a uh, we have a very interesting agenda today. Uh, for the details, I will leave it to our presenter, uh, David, to walk you yes. through, and okay. uh, I. Yeah, I want to uh, just mention the sequence of the uh, webinar. So we have the presentation first and follows with the Q&A. And at the end of the webinar, we are going to uh, play a, a competition quiz, which we call Kahoot game. So, uh, and the competition basically is based on what is presented today. So please stay focused. And uh, yeah, because the winner will gain, uh, receive a really nice prize. Uh, without further ado, I will hand it over to you, David. And uh, uh, David, would you like to maybe pr briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Um, uh, first of all, thank you all for joining me today to this presentation, uh, an introduction into Comfort Click and BOS. Uh, I'd just like to say a couple of words. I hope that all of you that are joining me today are doing okay, uh, are staying safe inside just find my screen you should be able to um you should be able to see my uh presentation that i have here and like i mentioned thank you all again for joining me um so to go through uh to go through what uh, today on a, what's the, on today's agenda what are we going to be talking about uh, i'm going to be talking a little bit uh, about us uh, what do we do what do we work with and how everything is done uh using uh, our system uh, we're going to go through the architecture that we provide for our clients. Uh, so you're able to see uh, how the whole communication between the devices is done. We're gonna go through the whole uh, configurator app structure. So you'll be able to see and find where everything is located. Uh, we're gonna be, since a lot of you uh, today are working with KNX, uh, we are also gonna be doing a ETS import. So we'll be able to see how easy it is to uh, basically add your ETS project into BOS. And we're also gonna be going through uh, the visualization part, the visualization aspect of BOS. We'll be able to see how easy it is to create a visualization for your client as well. And like Sarah mentioned, we're gonna be a Q&A at the end. Uh, so if you're gonna have any questions during the presentation, you can write them down and my colleague would then uh, answer as many as possible. Um, so, okay. so. To tell you a little bit about us, who we are, uh, for those who, for those of you who don't know who we are, we are a Comfort Click company uh, based in Ljubljana, Slovenia, and Europe. Uh, we have we were established way back in 2008, so we have more than a decade of experience with home automation. Uh, so we also provide a software and hardware solution for home automation and smart homes. Um, uh, currently, we have. Uh, many, many different projects that are live uh, that have been using our services uh, from small residential houses to bigger projects such as hotels and hospitals and so on. And we are currently in more than 10,000 buildings all over uh, the world. Uh, to give you a little quick, quick uh, 
how should I say, tree structure of how the communication between these devices is done. So as Sarah mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of our system, a lot of our homes are uh, is uh, is using many, many different devices. So we're not using just KNX or Z-Wave or remote bus. We have hundreds and hundreds of different devices. And in most cases, you would require to have an application for each of those devices. And the idea of ComfortClick and BOS, this operating system, is to have this seamless experience and seamless communication between all of these devices in just one platform. So to have this integration, to integrate your devices, uh, to create the visualization, there is actually a couple of requirements they need to do. The first thing is our BOS server. So this is both a hardware and software solution. We do provide both of those uh, as well. So we provide hardware uh, that is running our BOS server and of course our BOS server application uh, for our clients as well. This can be installed, like I mentioned, either on our hardware or you can actually use any Windows machine to install this application uh, and then create uh, the visualization and create your tasks and so on. To create the, the, to create the visualization, to create the tasks and to integrate your ETS project, we would, you would require to have BOS configurator application. So uh, during today's presentation, we're going to be mostly working with BOS configurator. I'll be showing you the structure, how everything looks. And uh, this application is also can be installed on any hardware. So any PC laptop that you might have can be used to create the visualization and import your ETS project. The last but not least is our client application. So this is again an application that can be installed on your machine, on your uh, laptop, Windows, whatever. And this can also be installed on your uh, mobile devices. So your clients or yourself can actually control the building, control the devices that are in the building from the comfort of your home or outside using your mobile application. So to give you, uh, so, the thing that I'm showing you right now is our BOS client application, and this is what the end product might look like. So once you have your ETS project imported, once your KNX project is added, your tasks are added and so on, this is how the one of the visualizations can look uh, when you're done with your projects. So as you can see, currently the screen that I'm showing you is a floor plan of a, an apartment building. And as you can see, we have number of different devices and number of different links on this one page. So in this, all of these devices that I'm showing you right here, you can see we have our lights, we have our shades, we have our utilities, and the client can simply use their, uh, their phone, their tablet, their uh, computer to just simply go and click on the device and control it. So like I said, this, this, this is not limited to just a KNX device or any other device. All of the devices that you see here, uh, can be can come from different company can come from different manufacturer and all of this can be integrated into BOS uh, When we are going to be actually creating our visualization I'll also be showing you how easy it is to create the simple visualization for your client to have this all of the the features uh, in this one screen uh, so every everything that I'm showing you here, so every icon, everything, any device that's on the screen, everything can be customizable. So what this means, you can actually, uh, I'm going to be also showing you later in the BOS configurator how easy it is to change the coloring of this, change the image, change the size, scale it up. And so there's actually almost limitless possibilities regarding your visualization, the positioning, the layouts, and so on. Um, as you can see, like I mentioned earlier, according to your device, you can either dim it, you can turn it on and off by simply clicking on the button, uh, turning down the shades, for instance, very, very seamless, very easy to use, especially for the clients. Um, so we have a, this basic way of controlling the devices, but if a device, let's say our AC unit requires additional functions, let's say our AC unit has on and off and we have ventilation and vane and so on, we can actually tweak every button that you see here to provide these features. So let's say I have this AC unit in my living room and I can simply click on it and turn it on and off, but if I click and hold it, you can see a number of different options that are available for this. So this can be applied to any button, any device that you might have that requires additional features to so simply just go, turn it on, uh, move the fan speed, and, uh, bring up the temperature, uh, change the mode, for instance, and play around and control the device uh, as it was intended. As you can see on this screen, 
we also have a couple of shortcuts to our other rooms. So I can very quickly select my living room here from this floor plan. And if I click on it, another, another part of the building will open. So you can see we also have this, um, not floor plan, but you can actually use live images of the building and then place the devices exactly where they are. So as you can see, we have our lights here at the top. I can very easily dim them, put down the shades, control uh, our lighting or heating in even. So all of this is also available and possible uh, on this. As you can see, we also have a couple of scenes that are here for this uh, uh, room. And our clients can very easily uh, turn on and off the scenes, but we also provide some freedom to our client, which means that you create this scene and later on every scene that you created can be changed in the client application as well. So like I did with the AC unit, I can, my, I can either click my scene or I can click and hold it and you'll be able to see the list of all the devices that are in the scene. And now I can play around with the devices, change what's going on with the scene is going to be triggered, change the RGB, change the, the lamps and so on and click OK. And the next time the scene is going to be triggered, the, the devices that are in the scene are going to be um, displayed a little bit differently. Um, so this is a, how should I say, a free way to create your visualization. So to place the devices exactly where they are, but there's also, also another possibility to have a automatic view of the building. So for this instance, I can actually just select my other room. For instance, let's select our kitchen. So as you can see, I've selected the rooms and I have this additional menu available for me to select between the rooms. And if I go to my kitchen, you'll be able to see that in this page, I don't have the devices and everything placed exactly where they are in the building, but they have an automatic uh, way of uh, displaying. So you can see we have our two frames. One is for our lighting and one is for our shades and others. And I can very quickly uh, control the devices like this. So we have a number of different possibilities, how the visualization is done, how you're going to present it to your client. And of course, it all depends on the client, how complicated or how easy uh, the visualization needs to be. So this is the way you would you would go from room to room. As you can see, we have different images and different everything for each room. Um, we, of course, not control just the devices, just the shades and the lamps. Of course, full home automation is required for our clients to be controlled. So alarm systems, for instance, is also fully built in into BOS. As you can see here, if I select my alarm here, a uh, digital uh, keypad is going to open and I can actually arm disarm the alarm remotely. If there's going to be any movement detection in or around the building, all of this can be, uh, of course, seen here. And everything that you see here can be used as a trigger, for instance, to do something else. So to trigger the alarm, trigger the light, for instance. So all of this can be done within BOS by simply creating a task or two to control these devices. For your, let's say, your heating also, you can have a separate heating panel created for each room, for instance. If there are more frames available, I can use the scroll to move around and control the heating. I can change the season, of course, I can change the set point temperature for each room. And you can see here also for our AC, we have uh, additional functions the same way as we added in the, uh, the floor plan that we had earlier. So if they're in the building, if there are multiple cameras, of course, camera display can, is also available to get some live feedback footage from uh, around your home. So you can have a little bit of sense of security as well. Um, not just simple visualization, but even more complicated Scala visualization are also available to be used in BUS. So you would very simply use a Scala kind of background and then add your devices uh, accordingly and create this a little bit more complicated, a little bit different visualization for your client as well. And you can actually play around and control the devices. Uh, every device and every, yeah, basically any device or any node in BOS can also have a consumption log. Of course, every device, uh, every home uh, needs to have some consumption uh, values to be saved. So we can, we, uh, we also have a simple graph option here available here. So every device and every uh, power meter that you might have in the building can be displayed in a graph. So from days, hours to months, years back, and all of the values can be either used in BOS or you can actually export them and use them anywhere else that you require. Uh, multiple different graphs can also be added into one. So there's multiple different values that can be dis displayed in the same graph to have a kind of comparison and to compare different values uh, within the graph as well.
Okay, so if I go through the rest of the building, you can see we have a number of different panels and number of different zones in the building. We know that each building is a little different, requires different devices and teams and so on. So you can have very, very customizable and very different uh, visualization each time. So this was, this was kind of presentation that show you how the end product might look at. And now we can actually go to our BOS configurator and create a simple but very useful visualization. And also let's add our devices in. So to do that, I'm just gonna open up my configurator. And you can see when you open your BOS configurator, you can see that we have in the middle of the screen, we have a number of different devices available here. So using BOS and using BOS configurator, you can have it installed on you in your office and then remotely connect to your other clients, for instance, computers. So there's actually a couple of different ways you can remotely connect. You can connect via direct IP. So it's simply adding the IP address of the device and connect remotely. You can connect via access ID, which is a unique name that we have for our server and then actually connect, connect to the cloud system, to the correct IP. But we also added a more secure feature, which would be a gateway connection. So using this gateway connection, uh, no additional port forwards are required. Uh, the connection is even more secure for you and your clients to have a more secure uh, home automation. So for this purpose, I'm just gonna select my local uh, PC that I have here, select it from the list. And this is the welcome screen that you see when you open your configurator. As you can see, our BOS configurator is built in a, in a configuration uh, tree. So we have our main nodes on the left side, and then we have additional sub nodes under each node that provides additional information uh, for the devices, tasks, themes, and so on. So if I select my building node, we have our basis license information. If there are any updates available, they are available to be downloaded here. We do try to keep in touch with our clients, uh, see if there's any new features that needs to be added, any, any issues that needs to be fixed, fixed. So we do try to update this um, software and our BOS as much as possible. Of course, uh, your network settings can also be tweaked here. You can also re uh, reboot or shut down the computer as well. The next major node that I wanted to talk to you today is our general. So if I select my general node and expand it, you'll be able to see that we have, of course, additional sub nodes available. So then if I select my users, you'll be able to see that we have a number of different users that are in this building. So what users does, let's say you have two users, one is for, let's say, parents, and the other one is for children, and you can actually limit parts of visualization for each of the users. So let's say your children don't have access to the heating, for instance, or any alarm or any unnecessary panel that you might want to hide uh, from one of your users. So this is how users are handled here. Any push notifications, emails, text messages are set here uh, on their messaging node. As you can see, when I select my, my uh, node, all additional information is available here on the right side. Next and major, uh, how should I say, feature that we support is our built-in translation tools. So as you can see, when I select my translations, you can see that I have the whole, trans the whole visualization that I have prepared that I showed you earlier with the devices has been translated into another language. So this is especially useful if you have a project that it's, is, let's say, a hotel or any project that has a number of different people that maybe don't speak English or any other language, you can have the whole translation, uh, whole visualization translated. And then in the client side, they can very quickly uh, change the language from one language to another and have the whole visualization in another language. So I also have just a quick, quick uh, presentation here how this might look, let's say, in a hotel. So I'm gonna log out from my home that I have and I'm just gonna log in into my hotel uh, that I have here. So as you can see, currently it's all in Greek uh, and your client can, let's say this is a hotel. You're, you, as you can see, the whole configuration has been translated into another language and on the client side, very quickly go here under settings and change the language to let's say Italian. And everything that you see here is automatically translated. Every device that might be in uh, the building has been translated into another language. So with just a click, a couple of clicks of, of a button, the whole thing is translated and can be used by someone else that might not speak the same language. So I'm just gonna go back to my uh, home that I have prepared. We're gonna be actually creating some visualization later on as well. So we're not gonna be playing around with the hotel. 
The next major thing that I wanted to show you is our customization. So if you remember earlier when I showed you the floor plan, I mentioned that everything, every icon that you saw can be changed, can be tweaked around. We have, as you see here under files, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pre-built images for you to use, for instance. So you can use these images to uh, have them display your devices that are in the building, but you can actually use your custom images here. So there's a couple of options you can do this. You can very easily simply download the image that we have, play it around with it, tweak it, and then re-upload it. Or you can upload your custom images, custom logos, custom backgrounds, and create a very different, very customizable visualization for our client. Uh, we also have a built-in weather system, so, so a short weather information and short weather forecast is also available here like this, as you can see it. So we have current weather information and a little forecast what's going to happen. So all of this is also available in BOS. And we also support full voice control of the devices. So both Alexa and Google Smart Home are supported by BOS. So if your client requires uh, some... Um, voice control of the building, all of this is possible uh, in BOS. We also support RPC services, so third-party applications can also be used, or you can uh, use this BOS in your other third-party application by, I don't know, IFTTT service, for instance. Uh, we're also working on integrating MQTT and uh, Zigbee as well. So those are also going to be added later on into BOS. The next major subnote I want to talk to you today is our devices. So if I select my devices, right click and select add, you'll be able to see the list of all the devices that we currently support. So this list was already provided in the beginning where I showed you that we that the goal of the whole BOS configurator and BOS applications is to have the communication possible between all of these devices. So that is of course possible in BOS. We support not just KNX and other devices. As you can see, we have also industrial devices that can be added such as Modbus, maybe Bucknet for instance. We have built-in alarm systems as well. So we have DSC, Paradox and Satel available for any of your sound system. Also Sonos is available. It's a very popular speaker that we have. Danon is also added into BOS. So all of these devices can be added into your project and can also have the communication between all of these devices. So since we are all mo mostly working with KNX that joined me today to this presentation, I'm just going to simply select my KNX device from the list and select add. And once I do this, you'll be able to see that my KNX has been added into a list of my devices that I already have in my building. And if I select each and every of these devices, you can again see the settings and additional information available on the right side. So for KNX, we know there's a couple of different ways you can connect to a KNX system. There is a IP option that you connect to. You can connect via USB, serial, or any other tunneling. All of the connection types are supported by BOS and the connection is very, very quickly to be done. Since uh, I mentioned earlier, we have more than a decade of experience, not with just KNX, but home automation in general. We know how easy it is for a KNX project also to get very complicated and big and just a number of different devices that are in one single building. So for that matter, we created our ETS import wizard. So the integration of your ETS project is even easier in BOS. So once you're, let's say you, you once you're done with your uh, ETS project, you can very simply export it as a XML or ESF file and then import it into BOS. So to do this, I can just simply go here, ETS import, ETS data from ETS, and I can find my project that I have prepared for you today and I can open it up. So once I open this project, oh, it's on my screen. Um, let me just scale it down a little bit so you'll be able to see all the devices. Uh, okay, so this is the input wizard that, I have show, that I'm showing you today. So as you can see, we have all the list of our devices that are in our ETS project. So we have our paths, we have our addresses, and of course we have our status addresses and types. As you can see, we have hundred, um, a large number of devices that are in our ETS project. In most cases, almost all of the devices are added automatically, but for this presentation's sake, I also have a couple of the devices that were not added automatically and need to be added manually in. But this feature requires a, just a basic knowledge of ETS. So if you have just, the, like I said, just basic knowledge of ETS, this procedure is very, very simple, very, very easy to add. Let's say we have our system parameter and I have our time, and this, is, this, this one needs to be added manually. I can very quickly select it, right click and select a DPT time. 
And I can go through this for our dimming also, status addresses. And I can see that I'm also, I'm clicking and I can also drag my mouse button to multiple select values and the integration and importation of ETS is even faster. So you would go through all of the project and add all the devices that needs to be added manually. And once you're done, the devices can be now imported. We all know that ETS project and KNX projects are usually have, each device has a group address and it also have, has a status address. So to get a feedback coming from the device, uh, a status address is required. And as you can see, we have our lights on and off and we have our lights on and off status. So in order to receive feedback in BOS as well, this status address needs to be added in as well. So uh, the, the, the feature that we added now is we can very easily select our status address. I can copy the address. I can select my on and off group address and I can very quickly select right click and paste the address to status address. So by doing this, you can see the status has been pasted correctly under the correct device. And now every time a physical button of the device will be pressed, BOS will also receive correct feedback and the device is gonna be functioning normally. And you can do this with the whole visualization. I'm not gonna go through all of these devices here. We're not gonna be using them. I don't wanna waste too much of your time with this ETS import. And you would just simply go through all of these devices. And once you're satisfied, you can click next. And by clicking next, you can see we imported 70 devices. And the next step, we are gonna define and tell BOS what this device actually is. So at the first step, we simply imported our ETS project. And now we're gonna tell BOS, I'm just gonna stick to my lights because we already uh, kind of went through those. I'm gonna select my lights on and off. Again, clicking and dragging to multiple select, right click, select template. And I'm gonna tell BOS that this is a lamp. And by doing this, you can see that the template has changed to a lamp, a image changed to this little bulb icon that we have, and the unit is now on and off. And I can very easily select a couple of these and change the image, for instance, to a little chandelier. And this is how a, the first part of the visualization is also done. And we can very easily go to, let's say, our shades in as well, select shades, templates, and select the template that we have for shades, shades here. And you can see, again, the templates has changed the icon, the image changed to a shade. And of course, we're not controlling our shades with simple on and off. We usually control them from zero to 100. Our unit is now different as well from zero to 100. So again, you would go through this whole procedure for your project. It's, once you get a little hang of it, it's very, very simple, very easy. And when you're satisfied, you can close it up. And if I expand my KNX node now, you'll be able to see that all the group addresses and every device that we have has been put into this subfolder. So you know exactly where your group addresses are. Everything is very, very transparent, very easy to find. So you know exactly where the group address is and you can now use it in your uh, configuration. So since we have our KNX project added, the next thing we can do, we can go to our theme, our visualization, and let's create a floor panel a kind of visualization that I showed you earlier, so you'll be able to see how easy it is to create this visualization. Like any device that I showed you earlier, everything that you select has additional information available on the right side. So if I select my background here, you can see the positioning and every setting for this background is on the right side. And I was gonna change my positioning from automatic to free, which is just gonna um, allow me to have uh, to, uh, place basically the devices exactly where they are. And I'm also just gonna select my layout of the building. So we actually have a background prepared here that we can use. Um, so this is the floor plan that I showed you earlier in the demo project that we have. And now how we can create this visualization is very, very simply by going to our KNX project. Let's just stick to our lights since we already have them in. And I'm just gonna select my living room ceiling lamp and I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna drag it into my visualization. And when I release it, you'll be able to see that the living room lamp has been added in. And I can very, very quickly go through bathroom, add it in, kitchen for instance, and let's say bedroom as well. So add those lamps in, and you can see that every device has been placed into the, our visualization, and these devices that have been placed can already be controlled. So if I go to my client application, go to my newly created panel that I added, I open it up and this is the visualization that I see now. So now I can very easily go and click 
turn on the devices and have this basic visualization already done. So you can see this procedure of creating this custom visualization is very, very simple, very, very easy to use. And good thing about BOS is that you create just one visualization and it will work on every device. So I'm currently this I'm currently displaying you this on my Windows machine. This could easily be displayed on a Android device or a, a iOS device, for instance. So you would have this one visualization displayed on any device. So for instance, I have this on my full screen, but if I want to play around, I could very easily go here and scale it down to let's say our um, devices. I'm just going to open another room so it's going to be more visible here. So we have our bedroom and I'm going to I'm going to scale it down to let's say a phone size. So this is how the visualization would look let's say on your phone. So you you can scroll around, you can control the devices and it will looks exactly uh, as I have it in my Windows machine. So creating this visualization and the whole um, controlling of the devices is very, very easy. If you have, let's say, a tablet, of course, the screen is a little wider and you have more things uh, showing, but you can see this will work exactly the same way on your uh, phone, on your tablet, or any device that you might have. So I'm just gonna put it back to full screen and we're gonna open my panel to show you what we created. Mm -hmm. So this is one way we can create a visualization. Another way is to have this automatic layout of the building. So I'm just going to remove the buttons that we added in. And usually we, I'm just going to scale so we have more room available here. Um, usually we add one or two frames in. And now we can actually add the devices into visualization. And every device that we add is going to be changed and scaled automatically according to, of course, all the settings that we have here. So I can do very easily the same thing that I did earlier, living room ceiling, drag and drop, and drag and drop my devices in. I can go to our shades, position, living room. I know exactly where my devices are. Everything is visible and everything is very transparent. I can select my frame. I can name it. So lights. And you can see a little title appear on the top. And these are our shades. And if I go to my BOS configurator, you can see that everything is refreshed live. So any change that you do in your configurator, you don't need to re-upload, re-download everything. Everything is visible directly in the client and we can go and control these devices. Every device, every node that you see here can be changed, can be customized. So I select, let's say this bathroom, uh, a bathroom light that I have, I can very easily change the icon here. If I change the style to a manual, even more options will pop open. So let's say I can change not just the text color, let's put it green. I can change the back color to let's say an, a red. So we have this not so appealing button, but the idea is to show you how easy it is to customize, to change the settings of each button. So many, many additional settings is available here for you to play around. So uh, the possibilities regarding the customizations is almost uh, limitless. Okay. So the next thing, so, now, so the next thing I want to show you since we have our KNX devices and we have our basic visualization done, the next thing we can do is create a little bit of our home automation. So I'm just gonna go here under tasks. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna select add. And here is you can able to see, um, uh, the list of all the tasks um, that we support. Uh, we support a number of different tasks as you can see here from simple data logs uh, to any scenes, schedules, even more complex tasks can be added such as calculations or program tasks, more on those later. And since we are gonna be doing a very simple introduction today, I'm just gonna create a very simple lights on scene. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, and creating our scenes is as simple as creating uh, our visualization. So if I go here, let's say to, since this is a lights on scene, I'm just going to go back to my KNX. I have my lights here prepared and I can very easily select this lamp, click it and drag it into the scene. And I can very quickly go through the devices that I, that I want. And I wanted to, to, to note you that we are not limited to just a KNX devices in this matter. I can very easily go to my Z-Wave and we have, let's say our hallway lamp here that we can add in. So value, change this. Uh, we can change this to living room. It's a dimmable. 
uh, this device in. I can very easily go and drag in a Sonos device. I can drag in a Modbus device. So all of these devices can be added into the scene. And when the scene is going to be triggered, all of these devices are going to communicate and all of these devices are going to be controlled at once. Since this is a lights on scene, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to simply, like we did with the import, I'm going to multiple select my devices, right click and set value to true. Since we have our uh, scene created, we can go to our panel. I'm just going to add a bottom menu here and I'm going to drag and drop my scene into our visualization. Maybe not, not very visible here, but we can easily change this. Let's have it a bright green color. And okay, my might not be the best one. I'm gonna tone it down a little bit to a little blue color so we see it not as great still. Uh, I don't know, darker color. Oh, okay, there we go, now we see it. Playing around, you can see very easy, very easy to change. You can put it any color as you want. And now your client can very easily click and control the devices that are in the scene. Again, like I showed you earlier, every scene can be tweaked, can be changed by the client. So I can easily click it, hold it, and change the, the what, what's going on with the devices. And the next time the scene is going to be triggered, these devices are going to turn off. So this is one way the communication is uh, is possible. Uh, using our scenes. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is our program task. So our program task is probably the most versatile and probably the mostly used and uh, task that we have in BOS, just because it allows you to have almost any node and any device in BOS can be used in this program task. It can be used as a trigger. It can be used as a um, set value, for instance. So this is, this is very, very useful to have, for instance, uh, and to have this home automation uh, and communication between devices possible. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna select, I'm gonna create a simple task that is gonna check my um, air quality that I have, which is a KNX device, and we're gonna be controlling our ventilation unit. We have here Daikin uh, ventilation unit uh, and uh, start the ventilation process and and bring in some more fresh air for instance so just to just to give you a very quick example so you see how this is done so as a trigger i'm gonna select my trigger i'm gonna drag it so you can see it and i'm gonna go to my knx device so we have a knx and we have a co2 measurement uh, group address and we're gonna select my condition that when this is gonna be more than a thousand so the co2 measurement is gonna be uh, more than 1000, I'm going to go here under commands and I'm going to set value to our, drag it back, to our ventilation unit and start the fan speed and go to full blast and just start the ventilation unit and clear out the air. So this is one way, uh, and this is another way actually, uh, to have this communication between, let's say, KNX and uh, Modbus, for instance. So this could very easily be any other device. It can very easily be, let's say, a KNX lamp and a Sonos speaker, for instance. This could be very easily uh, a Z-Wave KNX or any other combination that you maybe your client requires. Uh, so possibilities regarding the communication here are actually limitless. The next thing that I wanted to show you, and we're also be close. Uh, Probably the last thing that I'm going to be showing you today is also uh, one thing that I wanted to show you is I'm just going to go to our web page. And one thing that I want to tell you is everything that I showed you today. So every task, every device, every visualization, everything is available on our web page with additional information. So there's an abundance of information for each device, step by step instruction, how to use this. So KNX, for instance, if I select it here, you can see a KNX, we have tutorial videos, what every setting does. Any, any question that you might have can be, can be basically answered uh, uh, or simply on our webpage. So as you can see, every node that I showed you, every device, everything has a, an instruction, step-by-step -step how everything is used. And we also have examples and pre-built examples that can also be used. So I'm just gonna very, very quickly download an example that we have. Um, I'm just looking for my, um, where is it? Oh, it's in the tasks, I think. Uh, my KNX example, yeah, we have. So this is an example that we have pre-built that was made to control your Sonos speaker uh, using a KNX device. So I can very quickly 
um, download it um, to my computer. I open my BOS configurator. I select my import con control and I select my example. I click open and I add it into my building. So other tasks, I'm gonna add it in. So as you can see, now this pre-made visualization has been added and I can now very easily uh, tweak the settings change what everything that I might require. So this example uh, sends the, the, the volume to a Sonos speaker using KNX. It can also display the title or uh, basically you can also, a uh, good thing about our examples is you can actually just download it and then tweak it and make it uh, that it's exactly the same way as your uh, client requires. Um, so at this point, I will probably just conclude this basic introduction into BOS. I hope that you all learn a couple of things and see what BOS is capable of uh, and how the integration is done, how the communication is done and how easy it is to create a visualization. So, okay, now I'm gonna, I'm just gonna transfer myself to my colleague Matiz and we will try and answer uh, as many questions that you might have that during the presentation and and see uh and see how this goes uh thank you all again for uh joining me today and on with your questions hello from everybody from my side side also um my name is matit and i will answer uh the questions that you uh, let's go to the first one okay uh, what is the uh, program that BOS used to draw the 3D model of the MEM panel board? What program uh, do we use? Uh, actually, it's, there is no program. It's basically uh, where you do your configuration is uh, our tool called BOS Configurator. And here is where you create all the visualization. Um, the objects here and all the icons and the text and the colors and everything is changed in the configurator itself. Uh, but if you want specific icons, specific backgrounds and pictures, you can, of course, upload them by yourself, your own ones. You can create your own ones um, uh, like this that you download one of ours and then you can edit it. Uh, so you will get the right size and uh, uh, that you will see how it's done and then you can create your own icon uh, by yourself and save it back to S SVG file and then upload it to, to the configurator and then you can use it. Um, the same goes for the, let's say, lay layout images. Um, you either get the image from your uh, architects, um, they usually have 3D images um, and then you just import them into the BOS. Uh, one thing maybe that I need to warn you is that usually these uh, images from architects are in really high resolution, so it's recommended to, um, to scale them down uh, because if you are using slow connection, I mean, if the uh, the connection on the the building is slow, especially the upload, uh, then it, it will take some time to load the image and you don't want this. Uh, so you, it's recommended for you to, to scale down the image um, to some web, um, um format that's appropriate that's more appropriate so um you can also see this by if you download our layout uh, image um we can check the the size of it and you will see that it's uh, pretty small so this is our layout image and it's one megabyte um the size is one megabyte so usually if you get the image from the architects they are usually size of uh, five or even ten or even more uh, megabytes so that's one thing that you need to be careful with okay um, next question please yeah 
So like this one, does the house have to have a public IP address to access, uh, access it from outside? Uh, well, yes, it has to have a public IP address, but we also recently just launched, launched, launched our um, gateway service, which uh, will be uh, payable, but it will enable access to the uh, the BOS server without port forwarding and without needing uh, the public IP. So basically, the the cloud uh, the cloud access to the to your server. It will still be the server in your house. Uh, we will be just relaying the traffic um, from your server to the uh, end user device, so to the client. So All it's right. basically still everything it's still under your control. It's not, uh, uh, the configuration, it's not stored in the cloud. Great, um, the next one is a general question. Can, uh, can customers create the same by himself from the start? Um, actually, no, that's not possible yet. Um, the, the end user, so the client can only change this, the elements of the scenes that are pre-made by the system integ integrator. So um, he can only change the the scenes, scene elements that are basically put uh, in the list here. So this is the list of elements. Um, of course, system integrators can add more of them and then the client itself decides on which element uh, or which device he wants to control. Uh, by disabling the ones that he uh, that, uh, he don't need, so um, that's how can integrator uh, prepare a scene that it's more um, like uh, that's more unif that's be with be with all the elements, all the devices, and then client can decide uh, which element which devices he will uh, control with specific scene, but he cannot add. Uh, the client itself cannot add uh, devices by himself yet. We are also working on this. Okay. Um, Good. Um, and the next one is, uh, can you use this to virtually test your CANAS programming? Virtually, yeah, of course. Uh, here, under each device node, you can select demo mode. And with this, it actually means that uh, nothing will be sent to the Canex bus, but you can control and test all the, all your either visualization or your uh, logic and tasks. All right. So basically, I see that there are still quite a lot of questions. I do not think we can cover everything today. Like I mentioned before, uh, um, some okay. of you please like uh, uh, contact um comfort click directly to get an answer or uh, yeah maybe maybe you can also send us a list of the questions and we we will try to answer them and then we can make a, a youtube video with uh, answers to, to the questions regarding the the webinar yeah that is also a possibility one last question this is multi floor multi tp line house assume that the bos is connected to the main line the the filter tables will normally prevent local DAs to propagate to the main line. How do you handle all the traffic of group addresses since all GA now have to go on BOS and the main line? Do you open do you open up all couplers to all GAs disregarding the filter tables? Yeah, uh, usually if it, if the project is not that big, you can do that. You can open the filter uh, tables, but uh, in any case, you can always use multiple uh, KNX IP uh, interfaces. So here you could put more KNX IP interfaces, um, but in that case, you would need then to link uh, specific group addresses that you need to communicate between each other by yourself in the BOS, or you can of course also use um, KNX IP routers, uh, and then uh, here we can also uh, you can select 
uh, routing function, uh, routing connection type, and then you can connect to, to routers. So that's how you solve the, uh, the bigger projects. 